Howdy race fans! Welcome to In the Pits with Stock Car Scott. And of course each week In the Pits is brought to you on your little screen there. A uh, little computer screen by Monte Carlo Express Delivery. <clears throat> you know Monte Carlo Express Delivery. They've been taking care of courier needs of the Puget Sound area for over a decade now. So please like us on Facebook. Okay, this week, practice on Friday morning. That's what uh, started off today. Of course, it was F1 practice in Bahrain, so it made it like uh, late afternoon, evening, uh, when they were practicing for their race on Sunday. <clears throat> but it was at least it was on the same day. Um, and then a little bit later came uh, NASCAR practice. Now I only got to watch uh, F1 practice and if you've been watching F1 practice it was basically different song, same verse, Hamilton, Mercedes, uh, uh, Ferrari, you know, same thing. Hamilton uh, uh, best in, in practice, but that's just practice folks, you know. Uh, get to the rest of it, watch uh, a little bit of the NASCAR practice, uh, but not a whole lot. See, because I, after F1, well, actually, before F1 practice ended, I had to go and go to work, so uh, <clears throat> so I left the tape running for NASCAR, and I never really got interested in watching the whole thing. I watched a little bit of it, because, of course, it was Bristol, Bristol, baby, and it, it was uh, cars going around that uh that half mile track, you know, it's, it's a great track. But I read about uh, Matt Kenseth winning the pole uh, there on uh, NASCAR.com or, or something. Uh, somebody shot it to me on Facebook or whatever. So uh, I knew how it was going to end, and it was kind of uh, pointless in watching then. And plus, I was watching something else that was pointless the Mariners game. Mm. But we're not here to talk about. Uh, Baseball, we're here to talk about racing. Uh, so, up early Saturday morning to uh, to watch some racing. Um, had F1 qualifying, first thing. And in Bahrain, uh, F1 qualifying was on CNBC for a change. See, because they have to change it back and forth sometimes because uh, uh, they have soccer uh, uh, matches from England or someplace that have to have to run in that time slot. So they run it on CNBC, the, their, their business sort of channel. And there was other qualifying on uh, before I got up. That was uh, young uh, Eric Jones uh, in the number 20 uh, Joe Gibbs Racing Camry in the Xfinity series got up earlier than I did to uh, get his car on the pole. So uh, there you go. That's two poles in a row in the X Xfinity series that Eric Jones is, isn't even in yet. So uh, again, expecting great things from him. Also on the pole uh, Friday, uh, excuse me, Saturday morning, actually Saturday evening in Bahrain was Guessed it, Lewis Hamilton, same same as it's been the last four races, Lewis Hamilton on the pole. One thing different though, on the uh, outside outside pole there was uh, four-time champion Sebastian Vettel settling in with his uh, new Ferrari, Ferrari ride. Behind uh, Lewis Hamilton was his old sullen teammate, what's his name, uh, uh, Rosberg. Uh, and beside Rosberg was uh, Ferrari's last champion, Kimi Raikkonen, uh, who also is doing well uh, with uh, Ferrari these days. <clears throat> so, behind uh, them in row three, in uh, fifth and sixth place were the Williams Mercedes-powered cars of uh, Valtteri Bottas and... Philippe Massa. Unfortunately, Philippe Massa, that's not where he started uh, Sunday, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Then came a little cup practice before the Xfinity 300 lap race at Bristol. 
and that was on Fox Sports 1. The weather was really nice uh, there in Thunder Valley, but the Joker, Joey Logano, stunk up the show by taking the lead from the pole sitter there, uh, Phenom Eric Jones, on the first lap, and then went on to lead every one of the 300 laps of that race. Wow. And I don't know, they said that only been done, uh, oh, maybe a dozen times or so uh, in, uh, in the uh, Xfinity series, uh, Bush series, Nationwide series, all that uh, included. So uh, quite a feat for, uh, for young Joey Logano. And uh, he was nice enough to remember Steve Burns there in Victory Lane. But I was a little put out with him because he didn't say anything about his grandma that had just passed. And they had just buried on Wednesday. Maybe she didn't like racing, so uh, uh, he kind of forgot about her. <sighs> That's what young people do. Anyway, so he led uh, every lap. So uh, uh, no points uh, for anybody else for leading laps. No points for winning because uh, he doesn't get points. Uh, the top five in points for the Xfinity Series for those drivers stayed basically the same. It's still the same top five, but Chris Busher and Ty Dillon, who uh, Ty Dillon was first last week, are now tied for the top uh, spot. So uh, they're battling out on top, and of course, uh, Chase Elliott is still third, and uh, my uh, one of my favorite drivers there, Bubba Wallace, fourth, and his teammate, uh, Ryan Reed, fifth. So, next race of theirs is at Richmond on Friday evening here. Unfortunately, it is during uh, the rush traffic time uh, here in Seattle, so I might very well miss it. Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, afterwards, um, I watched a little practice out at Evergreen Speedway on the fanschoice.tv uh, on the uh, computer there. That was real nice. And also I got to catch a little bit of the qualifying for the Indy Racing League's uh, Grand Prix of Long Beach. So, yeah, that held my interest for a second or two. But then, Saturday evening, it was date night. Got to go to the races with my girl, Mary, and uh, it, it was a fun evening of racing there at Evergreen. Uh, as I mentioned on the last show, it was Frontier Family Night at Evergreen Speedway, and they had a bunch of divisions running. Uh, the Hornets, the Street Stock Figure 8s, the regular Street Stocks, the late models, and then they had a touring series in the Pro 4 trucks. I really enjoyed those guys. Uh, the late models, they had a 75 lap feature there on the 3 8 mile track, and that was what capped off the, uh, the show for the evening. But first off, the uh, first main after the, the uh, heats ran and all that sort of stuff, the first main was uh, the Hornets. And they got out there, and they didn't run the whole track, and they didn't even run a whole uh, oval. They had uh, part of the small track that the uh, figure eights run on, and part of the 3 8 track that the regular race cars run on. And they were connected by a chicane in the uh, back stretch that made everyone have to take a hard right turn into a funnel, which caused a, not a pileup, but this, this, this traffic jam uh, for, for the back uh, stretch there on the first lap, which uh, took a while to get everything uh, sorted out. It was, it was something. But right there, <clears throat> on the back stretch, everybody attacked that right turn and piled in together. And, and, and they got everybody sorted out, and when they did, uh, they, they got the race going again. There was one car out there, the number 66, that was dragging his bumper the whole time. And uh, basically, he got, once he got to the front, he led until he won the race uh, with his dragging bumper and everything. That was Mike Ridley, believe it or not. And then uh, second place went to... 
Scott Hunt in the number 22 car. Good looking white car with the 22 on it there. And third was the 41, good, another good looking uh, blue car there uh, of Mark Hubbard. He was third. And eight of the 19 Hornets that uh, started the race actually finished on the lead lap. They're making for some really good racing, especially with that that, that chicane in the, in the uh, back was made for some really interesting interesting stuff going on there. Uh, next up was the uh, the figure eight. I took a break from uh, videoing and, and watched a little bit of it, and there was uh, towards the end there was a wreck in I guess what would be turn three, where two cars got together, one ran up on the other one. And the evening was marred by one of the drivers getting out of his car and going and, and, and confronting uh, the other driver. I don't know if they were exchanging uh, dinner plans for later on or whatever, but fellas, that could have waited. That could have waited until the race was over because cars were still going by through that corner at race speed. <sighs> oh, well, hopefully, hopefully the officials pointed this out to these guys and they won't do that again. After intermission there, the uh, Pro 4 trucks came out for their first event of the 2015 season. I have uh, quite a few friends there in the uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook friends there to cheer on in the Pro 4 trucks, including uh, 62, uh, Cecil Howard with those uh, new easier to see numbers on his uh, nice blue truck there. He uh, started up front kind of worked his way to the back and then worked his way back up to about mid-pack and ended up uh, finishing fourth place there for the evening. 75 Don Brown, another uh, Facebook friend, started last and unfortunately never got any better. Sorry about that, Don. And the ultimate winner, Facebook friend Rick Shaver, worked his way up to the front in that really nice looking uh, red and white number 43. And, of course, he runs that 43 because Rick, Richard, Richard the King, there you go, Richard Petty. So, anyway, uh, the Pro, Pro 4 trucks, really good racing. Hope to see those guys race again soon because they're a touring series. Maybe I'll get to catch them at, uh, at Yakima or at South South Speedway. That'd be really awesome. Next up was the 30-lap uh, street stock main. And the returning uh, driver of the number 85, Jim Foti, proved he can win when it's dry, too, because he won last week in that downpour that they uh, had to race in. But he won this week by passing number 68, Carl Davidson, on the last lap. Facebook friends, uh, number 12, Chad Fitzpatrick, was fourth, and 06, Steve Patachik had trouble, uh, he ended up 12th. <clears throat> the, uh, the last big 75-lap uh, Speedway Chevrolet late model feature for, for the night was, again, an exciting race. Uh, had a res respectable 16-car field, including the first late model start for many stock regular out there at Evergreen and Facebook friend of mine, Scott Burby, in the number 03 Jana Helmet CPA Chevrolet owned by Rod Helmet and also crewed by him. So uh, hopefully I heard correctly uh, that uh, another Facebook friend, uh, the 32, Defending uh, track champion there, uh, Mike Holden, did set fast time uh, for the evening, followed by Luke Selican in his number three. The umpteenth time champion, uh, track champion out there, Tom Moriarty in his number 12, was third fastest. And number 20, Andy Soule, was fourth quick, which with the invert, Put my old Facebook buddy there, Andy Soul, on the pole for the feature. Other Facebook friends include number 90, Molly Helmet, uh, who you might see I've added to my 
my uh, my title card there. Molly Helmet qualified seventh, and Brandon Scheiber in his number 75 was eighth on the starting grid. But I think I think I was most happy for the number 03 driver Scott Burvey qualifying 14th in his first ever uh, Speedway Chevrolet late model start. It, it was it was great, you know. Uh, the feature didn't start well for Burby. Maybe that 03 got away from him a little bit there in turn two, bringing out uh, the first caution and a restart uh, without a lap being actually run. But when the race got going, number 20, Andy Soul, got out to an early lead, but that number 12 of Moriarty battled him hard every turn. If if I was going to get to see Andy win, uh, get to win a race. The umpteenth time champion in the number 12 was not going to make it easy on the 20 on my account. Not that night. After a lot of hard, aggressive driving by the two top combatants, a late restart put them side by side once again, with neither willing to yield in turn two. Which led to them making enough contact with each other to tear up equipment and allowed defending track champion number 32, Mike Hel uh, Holden, <laughs> if I called him Mike Helton before, I sure am sorry, Mike Holden, uh, to drive cleanly under the uh, paint swapping duo of Soul and Moriarty. Moriarty was worse for the uh, wear driving into the infield for a little impromptu volunteer bo auto body work. Soul continued until more contact on the last lap with another car led Andy to being sent to the uh, back and last lap being scored ninth, uh, last on the lead lap. And uh, Mike Holden uh, took the lead there during the uh, incident, incident there in turn two, and he held off uh, all comers, including uh, Luke Selican, uh, for his first win of the season in the late models. and. Uh, Mr. Selican in his number three finished just a few seconds behind in second place. Facebook friends number 75 Brandon Schieber and the number 90 of Molly Helmut finished sixth and seventh respectively. But again, again, I think I was most happy for the driver of the number 03 Jana Helmut CPA Chevrolet Scott Burby in his first ever late model race finishing 11th ahead of past track champion Tom Moriarty because Burby just wanted to finish and, and he did that only three laps down with great for your first start. Later in the pits Mike Holden had a winning smile. Andy Soule had a coping as well as can be expected smile, but the biggest smile in the pits that night was on the countenance of Scott Burby. It was the look of somebody who didn't know they could have so much fun. It's priceless, folks. It was priceless. But I did get in for, uh, the, for the Frontier family uh, discount price that evening, so actually there was a price to it, but it was still well, well worth it. Huh. So, it was family uh, fun night at the races, and it was fun seeing so many of my race fans, uh, friends. So, got lots of shout outs tonight. First one goes out to Jana of Jana Helmet CPA whose accounting services I can wholeheartedly endorse, endorse, excuse me, having uh, used them uh, this year for taxes. Also, shout outs go to Jeff, Molly, Brandon, Mike, Steve, Andy, Mike, Leanne, Rod, and a big shout out to, again, Scott Burby. Getting to see you have so much fun was so much fun. And it was, again, just a great night of racing with great weather to boot. But the best thing was being out there with my girl, Mary, my number one race fan. So super shout out to Mary, the love of my life. Oh, let me get me a drink. 
Got myself all <sighs> sterling. Let's see. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning was early because uh, the F1 race was there uh, in Bahrain, and it you know it went from uh, early evening into the night. So uh, they got to race under the lights, which is really nice there. And, of course, that's what you want to do out in the middle of the desert. I was worried there for a little while that, uh, that the F1 race might not be over with before uh, Bristol got started. But I really shouldn't have worried. As the Formula One race started, Philippe Moss's uh, Williams Mercedes would not start. So he got pushed into the pits, uh, and he had to start the race there after everyone else had... Uh, had left, he could uh, then uh, follow behind them. It was a great start because uh, Team Ferrari made a concerted effort together to get between the two Mercedes silver arrows, which they did with their prancing stallions. But uh, Sebastian Vettel suffered front wing damage during the race, uh, so both Ferraris were not able to stay up there on the podium positions. But Kimi Raikkonen was able to battle and stay there uh, for his best finish with Ferrari since his return to Marinello. Oh yes, and my favorite, Lewis Hamilton, won his third race of the season, and his teammate, what's his name, was third. Yes, I know what his name is. <clears throat> As the F1 race re uh, neared its end, I could see by the race day pre-race program uh, over there for NASCAR that it was raining steadily at Bristol. So I just let the tape run there and uh, NASCAR, they did get started later on, got in a few laps around 11, 11 o'clock or so here. That was just enough laps to uh, have the uh, both the Penske Fords wreck into each other, which was uh, uh, funny in its tragedy. But uh, the really hard stuff, the rain really started coming down after that. Kind of looked similar to uh, Evergreen last weekend, or weekend before last, when the mini stock race uh, raced out there. But uh, it was too coming down too hard for NASCAR, so they uh, had interviews for a while, and then they finally called it a little after one. So that gave me time to go out and cut the yard, yeah, and also time to uh, to watch a little bit of the IRL Grand Prix of Long Beach, which was won by Scott Dixon, and second place was Dancing with the Stars uh, star, Helio Castroneves, and number three was uh, former NASCAR F1 star uh, Juan Pablo Montoya. Sorry, race fans. It's kind of hard for me to get interested in those ugly-looking, non-real open-wheel cars, even though half of them are powered by by Chevy engines, you know, and the other half Hondas. You know, it's something for me to cheer for, but still, it's just it's not the same when they were, were true open-wheel. Uh, NASCAR got back to racing at uh, Bristol about 3.30 our time. And I had missed nothing, which I wish I could say the same about Dale Jr.'s uh, pit crew member that missed a lug nut, causing Jr. to have to come back to the pits under green, from which he never recovered, finishing 16th uh, place about two laps down, I think he was. Jimmy Johnson, on the other hand, literally beat and banged his 48 Chevy to a second place finish. One of the uh, incidents that he was in that he set off with young Jeb Burton. Yes, Burton is the uh, son of Daytona 500 winner Ward Burton. And uh, Jeb Burton got a little bit of uh, uh, Jimmy in his back there. Uh, and the spin that that set off caught up uh, the number four of Kevin Harvick and crashed his car so bad that uh, he was not good for the rest of the day. Was not a happy Sunday for Harvick. But the best 
of the surprise night race, Bristol night race, was the number 20 of Matt Kenseth, who had led the field uh, to the green there on the pole, being the second car of the weekend uh, for Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, number 20, to be on the pole. And he ran a fairly clean race, as clean as you can there as possible at Bristol. And uh, he ended up being able to finally win the 500 lap race that I think actually went to 511 because uh, even though he was about to win the race, the uh, the yellow came out for a little shower or something, and then uh, they finally let it let you know got it going again, and he did win the race outright. A couple other places changed behind him, but no big deal. Also, Fox Sports got to show yet another short track race on their Fox Sports 1 channels. Except for some cable companies and some satellite providers still don't carry Fox Sports 1. So there were some NASCAR fans that uh, didn't get to see that race. Didn't get to see a replay of it because they show the replays on uh, Fox Sports 1. You know, it reminds me of a deal that uh, Fox went dead on NASCAR fans a long time ago when they first started running NASCAR races is they put the uh, then Bush Series races on FX because they wanted to get more uh, penetration of that new cable at that time new cable channel into more homes and so they put uh, the, a NASCAR series on there of course, that's, that got the uh, cable company's uh, phones lighting up with uh, NASCAR fans saying, we want this FX channel. And then a year, couple of years uh, afterwards, the Bush races went away. They went back to uh, ESPN or something, but FX was still there. It gotten itself firmly entrenched. Cable companies were stuck with it. And, you know, it left a, a kind of a bad taste in my mouth where... I don't even watch FX channel at all anymore because I don't like it when my sport gets used as a pawn for some network's other purposes. You know, so, well, enough, enough. Get off my soapbox here. Get off my soapbox and we'll get back to this coming weekend is Richmond, the action track. Junior has a couple of sprint cup wins there. I think he's got a couple of uh, uh, infinity uh Bush Series, whatever races uh, uh, that he's won there. So uh, it ought to be a pretty good race there on Saturday night. The Xfinity race, unfortunately, like I said before, is on Friday evening about 4 o'clock or so. Uh, so it's right in the middle of rush time traffic. So I'll probably miss it live. But that's why we have video recorders and why those video recorders have timers on them so we can catch the things that we can't actually be home for. That doesn't make it any better, folks. I'll still be in a bad mood because I hate missing races when I should be home watching them. Anyway, the weather, uh, speaking of missing races, the weather uh, forecast for this weekend does not look real good for attending races around here in the Puget Sound area. So... Looks like I'm not going to see any live racing, but, and I know people say, well, why don't you go to uh, Wenatchee? They're having some big race out there. I don't go to the Wenatchee track, but that's a story for another show because, hey, I've come to the end of this show for this week's episode. So, please remember, support your local Speedway, your local track, get out there, watch some racing. Also, watch some racing on my YouTube channel, folks. I, I love it. Getting more uh, views all the time, going nowhere but up. Uh, I'll get what I uh, did last week on there as soon as I can. I've got it on the computer. I just needed to get the show done first. And then I'll get uh, Mike... Mike, hold on, hold up, hold up. I'll get your uh, winning race 
up on YouTube as soon as I can. So, thanks for watching. Like I say, if it's uh, if it's a, if it's nice, try to get out and uh, go to a track and take a friend because there are two things that are fun to do with somebody else, and the other one's going to a race. So. That's where you'll see me at the track, folks, because I'm Stock Car Scott, and this is in the pits. Thank you, folks. Good night.